My seats to the show better be this good, Dua. Hey, Vogue. An answer to 73 questions is now your opening act. I'm ready. Okay, can you first tell me what you're standing on? This is the levitator. Can you tell me the purpose of the levitator? I uh, get up every night and I perform levitating on this while flying through the arena. Oh my god, that sounds like magic. And how many shows have you performed on your tour so far? I've done 23 shows out of 109. Almost a quarter done. And what is the first thing you do when you get to a new city? I love to find a good restaurant and a really fun dive bar. How would you describe the future nostalgia tour in your own words? The craziest thing I've ever done. What's been the most memorable show on the tour? You know, I do get spoiled almost every night, but I have to say MSG was a really special one for me. Love New York City. And how has your approach to touring changed since you first started? It's definitely not rock and roll. It's lots of sleep and lots of tea. Two very important activities. (laughs) What tip would you give to someone who's about to start their first ever tour? Uh, Make sure you take some time for yourself um, to stay grounded in the midst of all this craziness. And what is your pre-show ritual? I do my dance warm-ups with my dancer Sharon, and then I do my vocal warm-ups with my backing vocalists. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have like a little fist pump handshake with my monitor engineer, Alex, and then I'm off on stage. How is onstage Dua different from Dua just hanging out? Pretty much the same, just a lot more adrenaline. When did you feel most vulnerable on stage? When I dropped my mic. Uh, at my show in Washington, D.C., and I was not prepared for that, so I think that was probably the most vulnerable moment. What's something people may not know about dancing during a performance? Well, I guess, you know, there's a lot of thinking with dancing and singing at the same time, but sometimes you're just thinking about what's for dinner. Now you have me thinking about dance moves. Hmm. What would you say is your most famous dance move? I think I'm just going to have to show you that one. Oh, I was hoping you'd offer that to me. So, Dua, you take the stage, the spotlight is on you. What is the perfect experience you want fans to have at your show? I, I would love them to have a really fun, really sweaty um, dancing experience where for 90 minutes you can just forget about everything that's happening on outside these walls. Oh, I love it. And what's the first thing you look for in a stage outfit? I love something that's comfortable but makes me feel really good. And you wear four outfits during the show. How did you go about selecting them? So my show is split up in like four acts. And so each outfit tells a different story from the first one being like the dance size class to the spacesuit at the end. Very cool. Girls, can we do the dance? Because Vogue wanna, wanna see it. You ready? That's right. Yeah? All right. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight. You happy, Vogue? Yes, Dua, you completely made my day. I'll catch up with you guys in a sec. Uh, Do you have a message for people who may have made fun of that dance? No, I think the message has been received. Got it. Now, Dua, how do you hope you inspire your fans? I really think, without sounding cliche, if I can do it, you can too. So if you're really passionate about something, then you should really just go for it. That's right. And how old were you when you realized you wanted to be a singer? I... Well, I dreamt about it from when I was like four or five, but really put it into action when I was 15, Mm -hmm. when I left uh, Kosovo for London. And what was the first song you ever wrote? First song I wrote was probably around the age of four or five, and I wrote it for my mum. It was in Albanian. Mm. And to translate it, it's like, when I grow up, can I borrow your shoes? When I grow up, can I wear your dress? When I grow up, can I be as pretty as you? Um, and now it's just a running family joke. Oh, that's cute. And what was the most important lesson you learned when you started making music? Uh, just to be really proud of the things that you put out, you know, what you represent and who you are as an artist, just to make sure that you have no regrets when you look back on the decisions that you made. What trait did you get from your mom? I definitely got my nurturing side and wanting to take care of people from my mom. And what about from your dad? Uh, the hard-working side and definitely the curiosity element. Was Albanian or English your first language? Albanian was my first language. What Albanian phrase was most often repeated in your house? Um, and what does that mean? It means what's for dinner. What was for dinner? Lots of yummy stuff. My mum, uh, she's a great cook and she cooks amazing uh, traditional Albanian food. So I always look forward to it, especially after a long stint on tour. Oh, that's amazing. 
And what was the most important thing you learned after moving out of your parents' house? Uh, I learned how to cook and how to do my dishes and do my laundry. Those are important things to know. And how do you unwind after a performance? I'm still figuring it out. But do you want to follow me and I'll show you something really, really cool. I would very much love to see something cool. Now, Dua, what is the most important thing that travel can do for a person? I feel like it can really just uh, broaden your perspective and your horizons. Now, I need some travel racks. Where should I get the best coffee in New York City? Um, Ludlow Coffee Supply. I love a maple oat latte from that. Best fish and chips in London? Seashell of Lisson Grove. And since we're in Los Angeles right now, where can I see some good art around here? I really love the Broad and LACMA. I think they've got great exhibitions on. Very nice. If you want to follow me, just be careful down these stairs. Cool. And mind your head as well. I wonder where Dua is taking me right now. I'm taking you to the underworld. Oh, I'm ready. And now you're making me crawl. I can't believe how crazy the stage is. Yeah. Hi, Brando. Hi, darling. This is Marlon, Brando, we like to call him Marlon. Hey, Brando. Really. Um, and this is my trolley, and this helps me get from A to B uh, when I'm doing quick change. So you can follow me, and I've got you a little seat for you as well. Ah. So we can do this together. Nice, so this is how you do it. All right. So do it, where do you keep your first Grammy? My first Grammy is uh, on the mantelpiece, uh, on top of the fireplace. That's the perfect location. And out of all the award ceremonies that you've been to, which one would you say has the best after party? Uh, the best after party is at the Brits, uh, because English people love to get f***ed up. Well, speaking of going out, have you ever used a dating app? I haven't, no. And what's the worst date that you've ever been on? I once went out on a date with a guy, we went to a party, and then we went to the smoking area, and he just started kissing another girl. How rude is that? All right, let's shift gears. If I give the names of people you work with, can you give me one word to describe them? Just one word. Just one word. Okay. Okay, uh, Elton John. A maverick. Calvin Harris. A polymath. Thanks, Brando. And what about Megan the Stallion? Well, it's not really one word, but the hot girl. Now, who would you say you were most excited to collaborate with on the Future Nostalgia remix? I was really excited to collaborate with the Blessed Madonna. Just getting to work with a female producer for the first time was really special for me, and get to reimagine the album was super cool. That is cool. And what song would you play at a dinner party to get every single person on the floor dancing? Oh, The Time Is Now by Maloko. How did your songwriting approach change between your two albums? I just got more confident and I trusted myself and my craft. And what is your favorite lyric that you've ever written? I'll sink my teeth in disbelief because you're the one that I want, which is from my song Love Again. So I love your future nostalgia tattoo. When did you get that? I got it before my album came out. I actually announced my album title through the tattoo. Very cool. And do you regret any of your tattoos? No, I don't regret any. Gin or vodka martini? Vodka martini, filthy. And what's one word that describes your style right now? Playful. I think that's a perfect description. All right, I'm gonna go and quickly change and I'll be right back. Okay, Dua, I'm gonna keep firing questions at you while you're changing. We can't stop this. All right. All right. What's the biggest difference between getting ready for a red carpet versus getting ready for a concert? When you're getting ready for a show, especially when you're on tour, it's like the traveling circus. You have a routine, it's so much easier, I feel. Whereas I feel like red carpets have a lot more pressure. Totally. And what's the biggest difference between your style five years ago versus now? Elevated, darling. And who do you think has the best style in the world? I love Kristen McMenemies. Oh, love her. Whoa! I'm getting pretty good at this quick change thing. Should we go and hang out in my dressing room for a sec? <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, so what is your go-to outfit when you're not working? Uh, working, not working, always in a look. What's something that you would never wear? Crocs. Me too. Stilettos or platforms? Stilettos. Monochrome or multicolored? Multicolored. What was the first designer item that you ever bought? Hey guys. Hey, what's up? <laughs> uh, first designer item I bought were a pair of Alexander McQueen boots that I got when um, I signed my record deal. I wore them to death. What was your favorite job? My favorite job was working as a hostess in a restaurant in Soho. I had 
a lot of amazing memories, made some great friends, and some really debaucherous nights. I can imagine. Who can always make you laugh? My siblings, but I think both me and my sister Rena can agree that our brother Jin is the funniest. What was the last list that you made on your notes app? I'd have to have a look. All right, take the list out. Let's have a look. Uh, the last list I made was the numerology report that I got from an astrologist. Ooh, can I see it? Mm -mm. Okay. Hey, John. How you doing? Hey, John. So how did you get the idea for Service 95? Uh, Service 95, it really came from like my love of lists list making, going and trying out different restaurants, different places, wanting to share that with my friends. Mm. And so I wanted to create a platform where I can do just that. I can also make activism accessible, mm. put stories by incredible journalists that really kind of, um, they're, they're kind of the kind of stories that you wouldn't necessarily go looking for. Right. And uh, it's an ultimate concierge service, is how I like to see it, from me to you. That's great. And how do you prepare for your podcast interviews? Uh, it takes me about four or five days to do lots of like reading and researching, watching interviews, videos, trying to get an understanding of who my guests are and what are the most interesting questions I could ask them. It's a lot of work. And what's one thing you always travel with? I always, always travel with my yoga mat. What's the most difficult yoga pose that you've mastered? Uh, crow pose into headstand. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, so you'll demonstrate for me? Uh, in heels and jeans, I can try. That's great, and I'm gonna uh, be over here and okay. not get in the way of this at all, so. Whoa! And she nails it! 10 out of 10 execution from Dua Lipa. That was amazing, and thank you for showing me that. Of course, anytime. Okay, so one thing I love about you is that you've never shied away from sharing your beliefs. Why is that so important to you? Um, I feel very lucky to have this platform, and so I feel like I need to use it for something that's way bigger than me. Makes sense. And what's the cause that's on your mind right now? I'm actually currently working with the activist Nadia Murad hmm. um, and trying to find out ways on how we can help the Yazidi community. Who inspires you politically? King Bernie. <laughs> Is there anything that you'd like to set the record straight on? A lot of people ask me if Dua Lipa is my real name. And it is. Noted. And do you have any newer rules that you would like to add to the new rules that you had before? <laughs> yes. Um, Make sure you give your friends your phone on a drunk night out so you don't end up drunk calling someone a million times. That's right. And what's one question you're tired of being asked? Are you ready? And last question, question number 73. For everyone watching at home, what is the definitive answer to the question, are you ready? Always. And I'm ready for your performance. Excited to see you on stage. Mwah. Thanks, Dua.